Hello, hello, hello. Hey, Crazy LT, it's good to see you. Hi, hi, hi. Hello, Millival Plan. Hi, hi. So, hey, you guys, I am doing my Monday message. Um, I will be uploading my Monday message from last Monday, which was the 15th. Um, I just recorded that on my uh, tablet and will put it on my YouTube. Yes, I know. I hate that it does that. Does that help some better? That helps a little better. May need to hold the white paper. I need white paper. Hold on. I hate having to hold that white paper. Let's see. No. You got the white paper? Yeah. <laughs> That's a big white paper. <laughs> Is it okay? Is it better with the book? Is it better like that? The screen went crazy for a second. It's helping. Okay. Yeah, because it wants... I'm, I'm trying to think. I didn't want to have to hold a piece of white paper. Let me see what I got here. Do, 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 do. Okay. Here's white paper. This is white paper. Does that help? Does that help? Okay. That's why I'm thinking about stop doing these things on on Periscope because it's just it's just too much gyration. It helps because I have an Android, and it helps keep it from chopping, being choppy. Yes, Mr. Bob, say hello. I knew somebody. Hey, folks. I knew they was gonna say, "Where's Mr. Bob? He's resting." But anyway, let me get this done. So today's uh, Monday message is ready, set, go. All right, so when we talk about being ready, <laughs> yeah, it's strange. <laughs> We're coming from Luke 12 and 35 that says, Be dressed in readiness and keep your lamps lit. And then we're talking about Matthew 24 and 42, which says, Therefore, be on alert, for you do not know which day your Lord is coming. So part of being ready, set, go is being ready, which means having your lamp slip, which means having your word in you, having your uh, your armor on, being ready, and because we don't know the day that the Lord is coming. So you want to be ye always ready, okay? Next, we're going to talk about set. And when you're set, that means that you've got everything you need and you are getting ready to accomplish something okay thank you for the hearts Marsh Matthew 25 1 through 13 talks about the 10 version virgins and it's a pretty long chapter so I'm not going to read it to you you can look it up for yourself if you have a Bible you can even look it up online on Google and you'll find it talks about the 10 versions there was five virgins that had oil in their had their lamps but they had brought some extra oil and then there was five virgins who had oils in their lamps and they didn't bring extra oil. Right? Remember we talked about you know not when the Lord is coming? Well, with them, they didn't know when the bridegroom was coming. The day got long. They fell asleep. And at midnight, the bridegroom came. Well, the ladies, the five virgins that had extra oil was able to put more oil in their lamps so that they could see their way to the bridegroom's home. The ladies who didn't beckoned the ones who did give us some of your oil. And they said, well, if I give you some of my extra oil, I'm not going to have for me. So they said, go buy your own. Hey, Tawana. And so by these, these girls, they got together and they said, all right, well, fine. We'll go buy, we'll go buy some oil. Now it's the middle of the night. I'm sure they had to wake up somebody to go buy some oil. But anyway, by the time they went and got their oil and came back, they knocked on the door and said, Mr. Bridegroom, let us in. And the bridegroom says, go away. I know you not. What? Wow. So God wants us to be set. We need to make sure that we have oils in our lamps. And how do you do that? You study the word because the word in Psalms 119, 105 says, your word is a lamp for my feet and a light on my path. 
<coughs> so make sure you have the word in you and you're not one of these people that's going to be running to buy a Bible when God is cracking the sky because then it's going to be too late and he's going to say guess what I know you're not you were warned and you stayed and you played and you didn't do what you were supposed to do and now I'm here and I'm ready to take those that are ready that are set and got their lamps and got their oils and they thought about it you know hey I might need some extra oil to get me through the night and they're ready to go okay and so that brings us to go out of ready set go and go comes from now go is an action is an action word which means you you're going to do something you're gonna go movement it means movement okay it's action Right? Because we all know faith without works is dead. All right. So you go. Right? Mark 16 and 15. And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. All right? Yes. Faith without works is dead. We don't want to be dead. We don't want to be dead. So many of us are sitting around here saying, I got the faith, I got the faith, I got the faith. And they're expecting it, they're expecting a job to come knocking on the door. They're expecting the groceries to fall out the sky. They're expecting that money tree to just pop up out the ground, you know. But no, you have to do your part. You have to do your part. It's funny because um, I was listening to a, um, I think his name is John Gray. He's a pastor over at one of Olstein's churches. And he talked about how he had diabetes. And he talked about how he's he's a little heavy set man. But he's not real heavy set, but he's heavy set. And um he talked about how he has diabetes. He has he's got a new show coming on TV. And they were saying, Well, what made you share that you had diabetes? And he said, you know, because there's so many of us that are saying, God heal me, God heal me. But then there's, we're sitting there with a pork chop in our hand. And he said, "You, we got to do our part too. So faith without works. Don't ask God to heal you if you're going to keep doing the same things that messed up your body to begin with. That would be like me saying, you know, God heal me, but I'm not, I'm not doing anything to help myself. I'm just going to lay here on the bed and wait for the healing to come. But look at Tawana. <laughs> Well, to water, this wasn't like an advertisement for him, but thank you. <laughs> you know, that's like me just laying here on the bed saying, okay, I'm going to wait for healing to fall out the sky. No, I had to learn just to this week with my husband being sick. I had to push myself. I can't believe the stairs that I used to do maybe twice a month. I've done them 10 times in the last three days and I'm still, I'm hurting. Oh, oh I'm hurting. But I'm alive and I'm okay and I'm down five pounds. So praise God, you know. And that's what I mean. I have to lose weight to get back surgery so I can get off this walker. So I can get, but I can lay here and say, God heal me and don't do nothing, you know. And that's not going to fix anything. All right. So when you go, you he says, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. And a lot of times... You know, people get hung up on that preach. You need to be living something, okay? Because you can't be telling somebody God is good. And the minute something somebody step on your toe, you having a cow fit. That is not going to work. They're going to be like, wait, didn't you just tell me God is good? But somebody stepped on your toe by act or somebody sitting in your seat at the church that everybody know you always sit in that seat. But this is a newcomer that doesn't know that that's your pew, the third pew in the corner. They don't know that's your seat. So they come and sit in your seat and you got an attitude before service even gets started good. All right. You got to live this thing. That's why I talk about the Beatitudes. Who are you trying to measure up to? Right. Right. What Tawana says. <laughs> so make sure that you are living not living it so be ready be set and then go and don't feel like you need a title or you need you you can talk to a neighbor you can talk to a homeless person you can talk to a depressed 
person. You can talk to anyone about God. And a lot of times, those closest to us are the hardest ones to minister to. Like your immediate family. You know, I have a hard-headed 26-year-old, but he's slowly learning. He told me he prayed for me and Dad. He felt bad that he couldn't come be with Dad. You know, and Dad almost died, you know. And, you know, he when just to hear him say he prayed for us, I was like, Woo, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. And he tells me he's reading the Bible. He's been reading Isaiah. And I'm like, what? And I said, you do know Mommy named you from the Bible. Your name is Stephen. He's like, Mom. Stephen got stoned. I said, yeah, but you you know, he still loved the Lord. <laughs> you know, these things that we tell our kids. But anyway, I just want to tell you, make sure you're ready, set, and ready to go. Put on the whole armor. Don't you go out there. Don't you go out there unprepared because the enemy will knock you upside your head. And then you got to come back crying, God, what happened? And if some of you follow me on Instagram, you will see the picture that I posted today that says the struggle is, the battle is real. The battle is real. But we are winners. But God needs some people. He needs some soldiers. You know, everybody, a lot of people are called, but not a lot of people are sent because nobody wants to do the work. They don't want to go through anything. They don't want to suffer through anything. I had I had the best example from I think if it wasn't from Dr. Stevenson it was from um Valerie Moore but I think it was Dr. Stevenson that said we're all clay in the potter's hand and I used to do ceramics so you know how they have the potter's wheel and it turns and you use the clay and you use the water and your fingers and you shape it and everything right you do have to go through to come out that's true and he's shaping you on that on that potter's wheel and everybody's shape is going to be different and a lot of times when you're doing clay like that it could be a bowl it could be a cup it could be a vase you just need to let God shape you and you got to keep staying on that on that spinning uh, potter's wheel you know, and you got to stay, stop looking over there to see what that's doing. And stop looking over here to see what that's going to be. You need to focus on him molding you and preparing you for the work that he has instilled to you to do. Okay. The gifts. Yes. The gifts that he's given you and the talents that he has put in you. So that is another way, you know, not to be worrying about what other people are doing. Hey. It's good to see you. So, that is my message today. Ready, set, go. Go tell somebody about the Lord. Go live in front of somebody the Lord's way. And uh, blessings to you all. Blessings. Thank you for coming to my scope. If you're catching this on YouTube, I'm Shirley with Lady S Class. Thank you for coming by my channel. And yes, thank you for keep praying for Mr. Bob. Mr. Bob, shout out. Hey, folks. <laughs> He's and thank you all for all the things that you've done to help support us. Yes. God bless you all. God bless you all. And this right here is even a card that came in today. So, Mr. Bob, is is day three now? You came home Friday, so Saturday, Sunday, Monday, yes. He's still healing. He's probably not going to get back to work before June 5th. He has been out of work since the 8th of May. So, like so a whole month, almost a whole month. You need my address? Okay, I will, I'll put it, I'll IG you my address. And so, yeah, the cards are coming in for him. So I thank the Lord for that. Um, and yes, you guys, just keep us in prayer because, um, how do I put this? <laughs> the bills need to be paid. And we don't know how we God's gonna pay them. God's gonna pay them. So Mr. Bob is the only was the only income earner, and we have already blown through our savings to uh, keep the lights on and a few other things going. The the uh, vital, right? The vital things. Um, but other stuff is gonna start coming through, and we just we don't know what we're gonna do. So we wait for God. I mean, yes, his short term disability will eventually come in. I don't know when it ain't coming in today. 
and we got to eat today we got to survive today it ain't coming in this week even so um that will be it i thank you for coming by and listening to me i hope something i said can help you in some kind of way and um, blessings to you all we love you guys and god loves you more all right all right see you soon yes yes you know what we're setting up all his 50 million uh doctor's appointments once i got that know what's going on i'll hit i'll uh i'll give you some information all right blessings to you all bye for now